Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again to be here live on Facebook and YouTube to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of the situation of As I always said, beloved, before I start preaching, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty, my friends, that we have an assurance that God promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstances, in every trial, in every testing in life, that we will not lose our minds, we will not trip out, we will not have a nervous breakdown in whatever situation you go through. Welcome this morning. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those of you who are watching from your living room, from your dining room, from your kitchen, from your car, from your office, from church, on the street with your phone, or right here this morning, God bless you richly. I release a blessing upon your family. I release a blessing upon your mind. I release a blessing upon your children. I release a blessing upon your business. I release a blessing upon your job. I release a blessing that God will prosper you and promote you in every area of life. I build a hedge around your life. Every generational curse I break from your life in the name of Jesus. Every blights against your life I destroy under the precious blood. Any spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil and work of darkness, I command to go in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. I thank you, God, that your people will walk in divine health and victory and prosperity in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Those of you who are watching me this morning, I know many are sick this morning. If you have cancer, you have AIDS, you have COVID, you have diabetes, you have a heart problem, a liver problem, a, a blood issue, a blood dialysis problem. If you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb, you're lame. If you're, you're oppressed, you're depressed, you're frustrated, you can't sleep in the night, sir. You're demon possessed, and my friends, and you do not know what is happening to you. Situation has come upon you suddenly in a weak time. You, you, you did not see it as it was coming, my friends. You will not lose your mind because God hands is upon your life. And those of you who are sick to death, and the doctors have given you up and says there is no cure for you. Go home and eat what you can. You just have a few weeks to live. I'm here to tell you that you will not die, but you will live because God has not finished with you as yet. You will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny because the Lord's hand is upon your life and you will not go home before your time. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. The thief comes, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ comes that you might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Are you walking in abundant life? Are you walking? Jesus says in his words, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto thee. My friends, this world has counterfeit peace. This world has a peace, my friends, that is counterfeit. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. My friends, let us remember this morning when Jesus Christ, before he died and bridged the gap between man and God, he was in the wilderness fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. He was in the wilderness very weak and the devil tempted him. When he was hungry, the devil told him, he says, when he was sitting, he says, if thou art the son of God, command these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus told the devil, Satan, who is the ruler of this world, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And then the devil, because Jesus was weak, my friends, in, in the flesh, he was weaker because he was fast, he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. My friends, the devil took him up on a high mountain, on a pinnacle, on a high mountain. And he says, if thou art the son of God, cast thyself down and the angels will take charge over thee and I'll take thee in our hands. And the Jesus said to the Satan, the devil, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then the devil did not let him again. The devil tempted him on that high mountain. And he showed him, he says, I will give you this, the world. 
if thou bow down and worship me. My friends, and in a flash, in a moment of a time, the devil showed Jesus the, the whole world. He said, I will give you the, this whole world. I will give you this whole world to rule over if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou serve. And the devil left, left him and went. Why am I telling you, my friends and beloved this morning, we are living in a very, very sick world. Our world is sick and confused. Our world is sick because the devil is a liar. Let me tell you something which you need to know, my friends. You don't trust the devil. The devil will take you high up. You know, if you have a tall cocoa tree, he'll put you on top of the, that cocoa tree and then he come at the bottom and he cut it off. He cut it off in a chainsaw, my friends, and you fall and, and you destroy yourself. The devil will take you up very high. The devil will take some of you in very high positions. My friends, he will take some of you in high positions. And you will be so high there. And then he will promise you the whole world. And then he will give you with one hand. And he will take it back with the other hand. And embarrass you, humiliate you. And, and make you feel like a piece of SHIT. When he finished with you, sorry to use such a word. But that's the work of the devil. My friends, I'm angry this morning. Because when I'm thinking of what is happening in the world, I do not cover for any president. I do not cover for any prime minister. You have to face the consequences. But I'm here to tell you, in this world, the system of the devil is terrible. And it's a mess. It's dirty. It's stink, my friends. Because you know why? The people in this world are controlled by the devil. And they don't have no respect for their leaders. You must have respect for your leaders. You you must show respect for your country leaders. I see in America, during the four years of Donald Trump reign, many times they tried to destroy that man with so much of things against him. I do not say he's a saint, but still you must have some sort amount of respect for your country leader. It's terrible to treat your leaders that way. Hallelujah. And only yesterday I see it. Boris Johnson has resigned. I do not say he's a saint. He made mistakes. But when I look at the parliament, which I normally watch sometimes, the pressure is on. Sometimes as leaders, you can lose your mind because there's no peace. There's no rest because everybody is on your back and everybody is on you with all issues. And there's only looking for something to make a case over you to just to embarrass you and, and, and embarrass you. My friends, the Bible says we must pray for our leaders. We must pray for our leaders in the world. When someone is appointed to a high position, especially prime ministers and especially president of country, don't belittle them. Let them run their term. That is why you have member of parliament and you have the senate to advise and guide them and direct them. Let them complete their term and let them move off decent, indecently and in order. Don't try to embarrass them and humiliate them and make them feel like shit. HIT, my friends, I'm angry this morning. No, this world is a sick, sick world. This world is sick and this world is messy. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar because the devil is in control. My friends, I want to tell you the peace and the power only comes from God. Hallelujah. Peace and power comes from God. And no matter what position you have in this world, you can be fired. Hallelujah. But as a prophet of God, I think only God can fire me. No man cannot fire me. Only the Almighty God. Because I speak for the Lord. I have called to be a prophet. I, 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 I know these people are promoted to be prophet. You do not promote to be prophet. You don't have to be a pastor a reverend, a bishop, an apostle, or whatever the case may be, and then you promote it higher to a prophet. You have to born to be a prophet. You have to be a call. It's a call. A prophet is born to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny. So no man can find me. Hallelujah. Only God. If I sin against God and I disobey God, he will deal with me. But even God knows how to forgive and help and restore. God says forgive 70 times 7. Hallelujah. 
Many people do not know how to forgive and forget, but they go looking for a way, an opportunity to destroy leaders, to destroy leaders, and to say all manner of evil against them and make them feel so low and so humiliated that sometimes they can lose their minds. One moment they're up and the next moment they're down to nothing. It's terrible in our world. Our world system is very messy. But let me get back to my point. I did not get that. I did not forget you listening to me and you want to be healed. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He is different. He says he's not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance. And 2,000 years ago when he came upon this earth, Hallelujah. When he came in this world, my friends, he bridged the gap between man and God and he died in our place. That we can have life and life more abundantly. My friends, in this sick world, we need God the Holy Spirit. Unless we have God the Holy Spirit in our lives, we cannot make it. No matter how high or big we are, we need to be saved. We need to be born again and filled with God the Holy Spirit to live a holy and pure and righteous life and not lose our mind in a sin sick world. Hallelujah. Are you following me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who are sick this morning, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is still in the same healing business. He is a healer of your soul and he's a healer of your body. And this morning, he's going to touch you and heal you and set you free from every sickness and every pain and every disease and every infirmities. Those of you who are suffering with pain in your joints. Whether it's arthritis pain, whatever pain you have, I know someone is watching me this morning. The pain is so much. There is no painkiller to take away that pain. You're suffering. You say, God, take my life. But I'm here to tell you this morning, this is your day. This is your time. This is your minute. This is your hour. God will touch you and take away all those aches and pains in the joints from your body. God will set you free. And God wants each and every one of us to walk in divine health and to live a fulfilled life. He wants us to sleep sound in the night. He wants us to give us true peace and joy and happiness in a sin sick world hallelujah i'm ready to receive your healing right now in the name of jesus i feel a tremendous anointing of the holy spirit in this room and i'm going to send for that anointing and god going to touch you and heal you and set you free this morning in jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name. give a big hand this morning. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah I thank you for your awesome power. I thank you because you're great and mighty this morning. And right now, oh Lord God, I'm going to send for that anointing. People receive right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see many are healed. Many are saved. Many are delivered. Many are set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities. Those who are crying, Jesus Christ will wipe your tears. Those who are frustrated and do not know what to do. Your life has become a mess. I'm here to tell you that God will touch you and heal you. God has already touched you and healed you and set you free. Give him prayer. Give him praise in his name. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. I thank God for healing. But because of time, I do not have time to call out your sicknesses and pain and disease. Write me, text me, call me, and let me know what God has done for you. You are serving a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, my friends. Hallelujah. Our world is heading for destruction. Our world is in chaos and turmoil and confusion. I say we're heading for the new world order. We're heading for a one world government. This system is changing so fast. Hallelujah. My friends, and Jesus Christ is returning very soon. I want to advise no matter if you're president or you're prime minister or whatever position you hold, if you're a billionaire or you're multi-billionaire, what the case may be, it's time you come to understand that only God can give you true peace and God can save your soul from what is coming to this earth. This world is heading for destruction. Hallelujah. My friends, 
we have so many things in this world. The war with Russia and Ukraine has now started. It's, it's now started. It's not finished after three, four months. Hallelujah. It's now started and putting the non stop until he flattened Ukraine. But I'm here to tell you as a prophet that why is what I saw in the spirit realm that Putin will not stop with Ukraine when he finished. He has his angry. He is very angry right now. His, his, his anger is on the west. His anger on, is on NATO because he's saying NATO is supplying Ukraine with more and more weapons and he is, 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 is blocking what he's doing. So he's coming after NATO, my friends. So our world is in a big mess. I'm here to tell you it's not over. The, all the president of the 195 sovereign nations will lose control, will lose control over the nation. Many will be many presidents will be changed, many prime ministers will be changed, and many things are happening. But I'm here to tell you what the scripture says. He that control the oil, control the world. Who is controlling the oil? And who will control the oil very soon in our world? We all knows about G7 hallelujah but my, my friends I know you people know also about BRICS BRICS is a group formed lately my friends and they have the they had the, they had the, the summit on the 14th of June BRICS the summit to review global uh, current global issue and which uh, which key agreements who are in BRICS my friends who are in BRICS we have Brazil is in BRICS Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa, and right now Argentina and Iran has applied to be a member of that group called BRICS. That will be like G7. BRICS will be, be BRICS 7, and G7, they're matching. But my friends, who is controlling? Hallelujah. Who will win in the end? He that controls the oil. Hallelujah. And the gas will control the world. Who have the most reserves in the world. My friends, if you remember, if you remember a week ago, BRICS had a summit. A summit happened 14 days ago. It was hosted by China virtually and it was also the 14th edition, my friends. So, my friends, this morning I'm going to tell you why I Argentina and Iran wants to join BRICS group. My friends, as you already know, BRICS is the acronym given to the joint partnership of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And they are also the permanent members of this group. Apart from these permanent members, there are other countries who have interest towards joining this group, my friends. And every year, every few year, country express their interest and they also get to attend the summit as a guest or as an observer. This year the observer countries was Algeria, Antigua, Cambodia, Egypt, Ethiopia, Fiji, Indonesia, by Iran, Kazakhstan, a single ops Kazakhstan, Malaysia, and Thailand, my friends, among these countries, Iran and Argentina, have applied to join BRICS. And once they join, formalities are done. This group is going to expand from existing five nations to seven nations and can potentially become another G7 grouping with different aims, objectives, and values. Now, let's get quickly on the why Argentina and Iran have applied for BRICS membership. And by the way, they have not yet received the membership. It is in the process. However, the main leaders of the group have almost agreed. Some last minute possibilities are being explored. So anyhow, they did why did they apply? The first thing that they have to understand is that Iran has world's second large gas reserves. And the second thing they have to understand is that Iran's relationship with the West start declining. Right after this 1979 Iran-Iranian revolution. Why, my friends, Ayatollah Khamenei, my friends, Islamic with this Shah Mohammed raised, my friends, the monarchy. And as all know it is secular that means it is black blocked by the west so that 1979 Iran 
revolution damaged Iran relationship with the West and after that the US Department of State has added Iran to the list of many state sponsored terrorism my friends started imposing numerous sanctions on Iran for developing nuclear technology and many more such things my friends, I'm here to tell you this morning, nuclear programs, my friends, and so on, explain everything. I will explain everything in detail. You're interested in it, my friends, this morning. I'm going to tell you right now, right now, my friends, I'm going to tell you, Iran's relationship with the West is not good. And Iran's nuclear weapon program is a threat to America. It's a threat to America. Interest, and that is why the United States and the European Union have done everything possible to destroy the Iranian economy by putting numerous sanctions they have also placed iran in in fixed uh, blacklist my friends since it means just about it's pakistan is the great is the greenest india has tried everything to put pakistan in the blacklist but somehow the west has never taken this matter seriously on the other hand, Iran is, is in the blacklist. Everyone know I don't need to say this this morning. Pakistan is used by both the United States and China from time to time. If a country can be used for X, Y, Z reasons in exchange for money, they naturally, their masters, they will just put them in the blacklist and they will put them in the gray list so that not they can be controlled, but that also they can use from time to time so that it, that is the Pakistan Pakistan situation, but the same logic does apply to Iran, my friends. It's like a bone in United States throne. It's like a bone in United States throne, my friends. Hallelujah. Iran is in the blacklist. Any other country in the blacklist and all kinds of export and import are banned for that country. Ultimately, the idea behind any kind of sanction is to create economic crisis so that they can force country leaders and government to obey Iran economy and have crushed by the West countries and Iran has also many apply, applied to the United States to suspend the restriction but America wants Iran to get rid of the nuclear weapons and open their facility to international inspection my friends which Iran is not at all in favor of because they simply don't trust the United States Iran strongly and feels that this way the United States will gain control of Iran national interests and no, on one hand, Iran does not does not give unto the United States demands. On the other hand, the United States is crushing Iranian economy, economy by applying maximum pressure through sanctions. There is what the, my friends that I have shown this morning. The economy is declining on the my various predicaments, my friends, and look this. Also, that what is happening, my friends, with the Republican and the Democrats in the United States, my friends, but it, whatever the case may be, whoever rule, it's fix, it's a fix something with that Iran nuclear program. But my friends, we need to understand why Iran nuclear program program is a threat to America interests. I cannot discuss it here, otherwise it will be a never ending. My this morning, my friends, it is very bad shape. Reason why. They able to run the economy somehow is because Iran had world's second largest oil reserve and I believe world's fourth largest oil reserve. Iran sells huge quality of oil illegally. Listen to this. Actually, the, the word illegal it's not the right word to think from Iran's perspective because that country has to survive somehow and have to do everything despite having numerous sanctions, my friends. They can sit and not rot, my friends. So they have to sell the oil, export dispute on U.S. sanctions. They've exported to countries like China, India, and Turkey. Iran has export oil to the nearby countries like Iraq, Syria, even Pakistan gets, as you know, Iran shares border with Pakistan near my friends and all smuggling is part of the world is a common thing to, to show my friends Iran economy is breathing otherwise the sanctions have been put my friends West countries and pretty crush the Iranian economy my friends what am I telling all this my friends 
Hallelujah. It's more powerful, important uh, decision to be part uh, of five powerful, five powerful, my friends, uh, five powerful, listen to this, uh, economies that will not only give Iran an international platform to present uh, the religion of, uh, the region of economics issue, but it will help Iran to become an important part uh, of powerful world market. Uh, hallelujah. Why well, I'm just saying, I take a few minutes to see this, my friends. Uh, this world is getting towards destruction and he that control the oil who can control the oil who <coughs> control the world right now as the winter will step in my friends NATO countries will suffer because they're depending on 40 percent of their gas and oil from russia and when they do not get the oil and gas they will not be able to get heated and with all these sanctions placing on russia it's making things harder and harder setting up the oil prices very high the gas prices high very high and the food prices very high in a world the world economy will be crashing only a few days ago I, I speak on the four P's of inflation. Inflation will hit the world very soon. Inflation will hit the world very soon. Over 250 million people will plunge into starvation. Almost I say 1.1 billion people are living below the poverty line and about two-thirds of the world population is living on the poverty line living on just uh, about two US dollars per day what is happening in the world and yet uh, the world is spending trillions and trillions of dollars in weapon of mass destruction what is happening in the world my friends hallelujah we need to understand what is happening in the world in the Western market if you look at the entire BRICS group China is by our largest economy in BRICS grouping accounting for more than 70% of the group uh, collective 27.5 trillion e economic strength uh, in their accounts for about 13% uh, Russia Brazil represent about seven each uh, and the remaining is South Africa <clears throat> Quick scooping also comes for more than 40% of the world's population, about 26% of the global economy. And you can see it clearly, my friends, what is happening in the world, what is happening in our world marketing. Hallelujah. This world is heading for catastrophe. This world is heading for destruction because the devil is in control of the world and the devil is in control of human minds. That is why Jesus has to return and put an end to what is happening in the world he says love not the world neither the things of the world he that loveth the world the love of the father is not in him my friends we must understand we are not of this world we are just passing through my friends and beloved and we need to understand clearly what God is telling us in his words but prayer works and I believe with all my heart this morning that we are serving a great and mighty God. We are serving a God who hears and answers prayers, my friends. They are tight times when we, when we simply need to remind ourselves that we need to pray. And if we pray and believe God by faith, we can change the course of this world. We can change what is happening, my friends. And God will help us and save us from catastrophe and from destruction, my friends. About the promises this morning that are found in the word of God. We need to understand this morning. Now, how do I like to share with some of you the promises of God? The world have I found it to be encouraging, my friends. Psalms chapter, Psalms. 34 sorry 6 this poor man cried and the Lord bore him and saved him out of all his troubles hallelujah if you cry God gonna save you the Bible says the Lord heard him and save him my friends and beloved I want you to know that the Lord hears prayers this morning he can hear your cries, leaders of the world. He can hear your cry, leaders of the world. The petition of your heart, Jesus will hear. He can hear your voice when you are in distress, leaders of the world. Listen to me this morning. God still hears. God still hears and answers prayers. No matter what your situation, don't allow the economy, uh, the enemy to whisper lies to you and tell you that God is too busy for you. He's never 
too busy. Our God never sleeps nor slumbers, my friends, and He will hear your prayers, leaders of the world. According to this word this morning, the Amplified Translation, my friends, for Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 tells us, Hallelujah, trust in the Lord and re rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding my friends or you will fail you will be defeated in all your ways know and yes thank you and acknowledge and recognize him hallelujah and he will make your paths straight my friends hallelujah and smooth for you removing obstacles that block your way hallelujah and remove, I want you to trust the Lord with uh, who will guide you, my friends, and especially want to speak to the person who has a calling on their life. If you call whatever you call for, you may not see how God can use you to be a good leader, a good president, a good prime minister. And if you might be thinking about there is no way forward for you, well, I want to tell you that God has promised in his word to make your paths straight and smooth for you but you have to trust him and he will remove all the obstacles that block your path this morning if you trust him saints of God trust and believe trust and believe that God will make a way a way for you he will make a way for your family for your marriage for your health my friends for your health hallelujah God will make a way for you this morning he will make a way for you my friends he will make a you now Psalms 9 verse 9 says this morning and the Lord also will be a refuge. He will be a refuge for the oppressor. A refuge in times of trouble. Are you in trouble this morning? A refuge can be defined as a shelter or protection from danger or embarrassment or shame, distress. So in other words, God has promised to be your shelter. Hallelujah. And when all hell breaks loose in this world, when all hell breaks loose in this world, God will be your shelter. There will be <clears throat> widespread chaos and fear in this world very soon. God will be your shelter, my friends and beloved. When the enemy comes in like a flood, hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord will lift you up like a standard, a standard against him. Trust and believe, my friends, that God, that God Almighty will shelter you, my friends. He will shelter you. Now let's pray this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God, Lord, this morning. I thank you for the powerful wonderful promises in your word you are God who hears you are God who hears and answer our prayers this morning you are God who is a refuge for the oppressed this morning your refuge in times of trouble oh Lord you are a refuge when there is danger oh Lord God Almighty you Lord and you, you Lord are compassionate you are a God who offers unspeakable joy in a sick world and peace beyond understanding in a sick world hallelujah you're a God who never fails you God you you are almighty in battle in battle and so Lord with your whole heart with my whole heart I safely trust in you this morning I thank you for your love Lord Jesus hallelujah I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice this morning hallelujah may they come to be to the realization that you are that you are loved by Jesus Christ your love that they, they, you may come to the understanding standing this morning my friends and beloved that there is nothing that separate us from God's love according to Romans chapter 8 verse 15 25 to 39 tells us my friends and beloved in this passage your word says who shall separate us from the love of Christ hallelujah who shall tribulation shall tribulation or hardship or persecution my friends or famine or nakedness or danger or sword my friends as it is written 
For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Hallelujah. Oh no, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Give him a big hand to him who loves us. And for I am convinced this morning that neither death nor life, nor hallelujah, not, nor angels, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future. Hallelujah. Neither future nor, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. In all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Our Lord, God save our world. Words fail me to try to express my joy and gratitude at your love this morning and this life, Lord Jesus. My loved ones may battered me. My loved ones may battered me. My loved ones may let me down. They may even forsake me. Your loved ones may let you down and forsake you and leave you. I thank God that you promise. I know that, that I can always rely on you because he says you never leave me nor forsake me I can count on you there will be for me I count on you this morning you will be my cornerstone oh Lord I can count on you to block the fiery darts that may be thrown by my enemy by my enemy it's only you, Jesus, who can keep me truly safe this morning, secure. You alone can preserve my life, hallelujah, my health, my peace of mind, even my friends this morning. Only my Lord, only my Lord, my defender, can destroy every plan, every plan that the devil has plotted, every plan the devil has plotted. Your King, King Jesus exposed this morning. Is there any in trouble they are sent before me so I place my faith in you I place my trust in you Lord I put you in you I know that if I abide in you Lord Jesus I dwell in your house hallelujah then your presence will cover me from head to toe this morning and of God before me my friends who can stand against me if God is for me who who can stand against me faith by faith my lord so i may be strong i may be strong this morning one who is bold and courageous this morning one who walks in the authority in the authority of a child of god hallelujah your word lord this prayer this morning says in second corinthians 1 verse 3 and 4 i just like pray for someone hallelujah bless grateful praise and adore this morning be the god Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort and who comforts and encourages my friends in every trouble, in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves, which we ourselves are comforted by God himself. Hallelujah. I look to you for encouragement this morning. I look Look to you for comfort this morning. Hallelujah. I trust and rely on you this morning. Oh, the God who hears my cries. The God who hears my cries. The God who answers the petition of my heart. Hallelujah. The God who listens to my voice. Hallelujah. When I am in distress. When I'm in distress, the promises in my in your word strengthens me and offer me hope. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you for promising never to leave me nor to forsake me. My oh God, my God, I thank you for promise to be my refuge this morning. And Lord, Lord, this morning, I thank you for hearing this prayer this morning. I thank you. It is the 
your might in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that I pray. I pray this morning and I give you thanks. I give you glory and honor. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, my friends and beloved. It has been a great joy and privilege once again to be here this morning. Hallelujah. I love you in the love of God. World, I want to encourage you. Pray for your president of your country. Pray for your prime minister. Give them wisdom and knowledge. Bricks of them, stop throwing rocks at them, stop trying to destroy their lives and their mind and pray for them and pray for the cabinets and pray for the senator and pray for the parliaments and pray for your leaders with church leaders or government leaders or what the case may be. Keep on praying for your leaders and don't bash them and don't embarrass them and don't humiliate them and don't make them feel small. Remember, the world is looking, these men have been your leaders don't put them to shame let things roll in the way it ought to be let follow follow the plan of god god bless you richly it has been a joy and great privilege to be here this morning my friends hallelujah do have a wonderful day i love you in the love of god i'll see you tomorrow in jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name god bless you richly i love you in the love of god in, amen. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah.